The history of space exploration has spanned many decades. Numerous spacecraft have ventured into space, marking significant milestones for humanity. Among the most notable are the missions that landed astronauts on the moon between 1969 and 1972 aboard the Apollo crew capsule. But if given the chance, would you dare to sit on those spacecraft? Before you make up your mind, let's take a look inside the legendary Apollo. Inside these spacecraft, we typically find a cramped cabin with a few closely arranged seats, a control panel, and some computer screens for working. The Apollo Command Module has a diameter of 3.9 meters and a height of 3.47 meters. It weighed 5,800 kilograms dry and had a crew cabin volume of just a little over 6 cubic meters. It could accommodate three astronauts for about a week. During the trip from Earth to the Moon, they usually slept under their seats. Behind their seats were storage compartments for various experiments. Imagine being confined to such a small space for three days, especially when gravity takes care of most tasks. Occasionally, you'd have to fasten your seatbelt for adjustment, which took around three to four seconds. That sounds uncomfortable, right? Remember that scene in Star Wars when they're rescuing the princess from the Death Star and she sees the Millennium Falcon and says, you came here in that? You're braver than I thought. Well, that's how I felt when I saw an Apollo capsule. However, with the current advancements in the space industry, things are gradually improving. As you can see, SpaceX's Dragon is one of the most modern spacecraft with a much more comfortable crew cabin for four astronauts, or even up to seven. But in reality, as the entire world focuses on returning to the moon and even aiming for Mars, humanity truly needs something larger. This would be a place where we could live, work comfortably, and perform other activities, like living in our own homes. The most promising candidate for this is SpaceX's Starship. If astronauts were arranged according to Apollo standards, 400 people could fit within Starship's 1,000 cubic meters. With three times the space allotted per astronaut, Starship would still have room for 150 people. It's truly a future home in space, comparable to the International Space Station. So, let's open the door, step inside, and discover it. With the size of Starship over 50 meters long for both Starship V1 and V2 and a diameter of 9 meters, it provides ample space for functional areas. The lower section is dedicated to the rocket's essential components, including up to nine Raptor engines. Above this section, the spacecraft contains large fuel tanks covered by a common dome. The cargo and crew sections are located in the upper part, estimated to be over 17 meters long. The design is logically divided into six vertical floors, with ceiling heights varying depending on the function of each space. With about 2.5 meters from floor to ceiling, the interior is designed for comfort without hindering movement. The center of the gravity remains low, which is vital for the first successful vertical landing on any planet. First, start with the lowest floor. Here, we'll see scientific instruments, robots, rovers, and other cargo blocks. These will be extremely important for research missions. In addition, we will also see an electrical system which will provide energy to the entire system above. Therefore, this floor can be considered a warehouse in this house. Next, the second floor will be where the most important resources are stored, food and water. Besides that, you can also see a space that no spacecraft has ever had before, a garden. Astronauts can grow and care for vegetables here, creating a green space inside the spacecraft. That can be considered a way for them to relax. However, its main role is to provide an additional source of nutrition for astronauts. After eating, we'll need a space to exercise and maintain health. The third floor will have exercise machines like treadmills, weight machines, and more for astronauts to maintain physical health like muscles, bones, and cardiovascular health. Besides this floor, we'll also have bathrooms and toilets for astronauts to conduct their personal lives. There is a big challenge here. Water does not flow like it does on Earth due to the lack of gravity. So SpaceX will prepare special equipment like space toilets, wet towels, and dry shampoo to help us live more conveniently in this environment. 
the next floor of this house will be where astronauts have their private space, the bedroom. It will be divided into small rooms with a bed inside. Each crew member may have their own sleeping pod, similar to the capsule hotels in Japan. The room size will be large and comfortable enough for astronauts to get a good night's sleep after a hard-working day. Next, we will go to the fifth floor, the relaxation area. This floor is quite special compared to other floors. SpaceX will design large glass windows where astronauts see outer space. It will create a feeling of excitement for most of us because all of this scenery that we could only see through TV or on our smartphones is now just a piece of glass away from us. Moreover, we'll also experience the feeling of floating in a zero-gravity environment on this floor. However, this is only a possibility, as with the latest renders of the Lunar Starship, we do not see any large windows. This demonstrates that the design will continue to be updated in alignment with ongoing space exploration research programs. The elevator will now stop on the sixth floor, the highest of the house. This floor will be smaller than others because it's located at the top where the nose cone structure will taper. This will be the space for control systems, seats, and the main workplace of astronauts. The facilities are excellent, but space is truly harsh and the journeys will undoubtedly come with obstacles. For a trip to the moon, a Starship trip takes three days, which isn't too long. However, for longer journeys, such as Mars, even a home-like environment may still face many challenges. One of the major challenges that the crew will have to face with is the increasing delay in communication with planet Earth. While astronauts aboard the ISS enjoy nearly real-time communication due to how close they are to us, the situation changes drastically as the Starship ventures farther into space. By the time the Starship gets halfway to Mars, the delay for a single message to go between the spacecraft and Earth will be about 10 minutes each way, making real-time conversations impossible. This communication lag introduces significant psychological challenges for the crew. In an era where we're accustomed to instant connectivity, the isolation of space travel can be profound. The crew will no longer have the comfort of immediate responses or the ability to interact with loved ones in mission control in real time. As they move deeper into space, the crew may start to feel increasingly cut off from Earth, which could lead to feelings of loneliness and detachment. Managing the mental well-being of the crew will be critical. Extended isolation combined with a lack of direct communication can take a toll on morale. Without the ability to truly receive emotional support or guidance from Earth, the crew will need to rely heavily on one another for companionship and teamwork. Therefore, psychological support systems, virtual entertainment, and communication strategies will certainly be carefully planned by SpaceX to minimize the impact of isolation and ensure that the crew remains mentally resilient throughout their months-long journey through space. Besides life happening inside the Starship, we also raise the question of how Starship will generate enough energy for humans to use. The journey to and around the moon could take up to 10 days, and going to Mars could take several months, presenting a complex challenge that requires a reliable and sustainable power source capable of maintaining life support systems, communications, and other critical functions. Three main power options are being considered, solar panels, batteries, and hydrogen fuel cells, each with its own advantages and limitations. Solar panels are the most familiar power source in space, successfully powering the ISS with their large solar arrays. However, scaling this technology for Starship is not without its difficulties. The ISS's solar wings are enormous, over 100 feet long, making it impractical to equip Starship with similar sized panels. Additionally, as the Starship travels farther from the sun, solar energy becomes less efficient meaning the panels would need to be even larger to generate the necessary power. This decrease in energy output as distance increases poses a significant challenge, especially when approaching Mars, where sunlight is less intense than near the Earth. Next are batteries, specifically those made by Tesla, which offer another potential solution. Tesla Powerwalls, designed to store large amounts of energy, could be used to power the spacecraft. 
These batteries are highly efficient and capable of providing consistent power for extended periods. However, they come with a major drawback, and that is weight. Each Powerwall unit weighs around 250 pounds, and carrying enough batteries to power Starship for six months would significantly reduce cargo capacity. This trade-off between energy storage and usable payload space is a critical factor in deciding how many batteries can realistically be brought along. Finally, hydrogen cells are another promising option. These cells generate electricity by converting hydrogen gas into water, providing a dual benefit. Not only do they produce power, but they also create water as a byproduct, which can be vital for crew survival. Hydrogen is the lightest element, making fuel cells a lighter option compared to batteries. While hydrogen fuel cells have already been successfully used to power vehicles, scaling them up to meet the demands of a spacecraft like Starship requires more development. Though promising, this technology is not yet a definitive solution, and further research will be needed to determine its feasibility for long-duration space missions. Each of these power sources has its strengths and weaknesses, and a combination of all three may ultimately be needed to ensure the Starship has a dependable energy supply for its mission to Mars. There are ways to harvest energy from external sources, but above all, we must not overlook Starship's main fuel. It is also crucial for long journeys, especially trips to Mars. With its current design, Starship will have enough fuel tanks to hold 1,200 tons of fuel. In the future, if SpaceX continues to increase the size of Starship, the fuel payload increases further, helping provide more energy for longer future missions. In particular, Starship is using liquid oxygen and liquid methane for fuel. When we get to planets like Mars, which is considered to have frozen water underground and an atmosphere rich in carbon dioxide, we can use chemical reactions to convert them into liquid oxygen and liquid methane to replenish Starship's fuel. If we can do that, we don't need to worry about fuel when exploring Mars and beyond. However, it will take time for SpaceX to develop the technology that can collect and convert those available resources into usable fuel. Everything seemed ready to go. After creating such a spacecraft, SpaceX's next task will be to press the copy button to create hundreds, if not thousands, of Starship versions for the mission of conquering the universe. With talented people like Elon and his SpaceX engineers, this scenario is certainly possible. What they need now is time. They've been making strong developments and a promising future for Starship for over the years. We will not be able to predict specifically what the future will be like, but right now we have to admit that SpaceX is changing the space race. They'll redefine the concept of space exploration by creating something that has never existed before, a house inside a spacecraft. This will blow the minds of even agencies that have created many glorious feats in the past, like NASA. More than ever, let's put our trust in Elon and SpaceX. In the future, perhaps many of us will become lucky passengers to sit on starships to go to new worlds. When we return, we'll not only tell about where we went and what we achieved, but we'll also be able to tell them about the exciting life we experienced on this wonderful spacecraft. That's all for today's episode. Thank you for watching and see you next time.